Okay, so this is a very optimistic title because, uh, in fact, there is very little uh, clear evidence of effects of smoking on the sperm epigenome and transmission. So um, what I think the hopeful side of this is, is that we now have the technology to look. So um, I'm... So again, my question here is, how might smoking impact the epigenome of male uh, germ cells? And uh, I'm going to go through uh, a few different uh, aspects. The first, approaches to DNA methylation analysis, because almost all of the studies on smoking have been looking at DNA methylation. I think that there are probably better techniques uh, that can look at much more high resolution now. Um, biological plausibility uh, from the uh, somatic uh, cell studies, uh, we had expected that there would be a, lo a lot of DNA methylation defects in sperm, and we don't have as many as we would expect. Why might that uh, be? Um, the effects of smoking on the sperm epigenome, the studies that we do have, uh, what some of the mechanisms might be other than uh, DNA methylation, and the uh, potential will be heritability across generations. Okay, so first to start with uh, technology. Um, it started in uh, the early 2000s. We had technology to finally be able to look at high resolution at DNA methylation um, across the, uh, the full epigenome. And that was because of bisulfite treatment that uh, converts uh, cytosines that are not methylated to uracils, so they can be seen as thymine after PCR amplification, and it leaves uh, methylated cytosines as cytosine in the DNA. So we can now look, uh, just using sequencing technologies, at every single uh, site of the 30 million in uh, the, the epigenome. All you need is enough money and computing power. And that is not a uh, a small task with the number of terabytes that we're dealing with now and where to put it and how to find it and, and uh, how to share it. So um, the techniques to study DNA methylation are um, many and they basically can be divided into those you can, where you can do a lot of assays uh, that are on single uh, copy genes like pyrosequencing. Uh, to those that allow you to uh, look at every site in the epigenome. So the gold standard is whole genome bisulfite sequencing so that you can look at, in high depth at methylation at every site in uh, the, uh, the uh, genome. However, uh, because uh, that uh, is a lot of, lot of work, there have been other uh, sequencing technologies that um, either look at a subset of those um, or that capture specific regions um, of the methylome that you want to look at. But for most of the studies that have been done so far in relation to smoking and sperm um, and even somatic cells, the array-based technologies uh, have been used and the comparisons are used there. So there it's looking at 450,000 to 850,000 of the 30 million uh, sites. They're mostly in and around genes and in uh, CPG-rich uh, regions, often not those that are most environmentally sensitive, and I will talk a little bit more about that at the end. But those are the studies that uh, have been done and have allowed comparison across um, different cohorts. Okay, so let's first look at some of the uh, somatic studies, and then uh, I'm presenting those as a comparison for what has been done in the, uh, the sperm. So uh, this is a, a study that uh, did a meta-analysis of genome-wide DNA methylation studies where all of these studies use this Illumina 450K uh, array. So there were 15,000 blood-derived DNA samples, 16 different cohorts, and uh, 2,400 about current, 6,500 former, and 6,900 uh, never smokers. And what they found was in a large number of DNA methylation uh, effects, um, affecting 2,600 CPGs um, at the Bonferroni correction level, 18,000 at a P less than uh, 0.05 uh, 
correction level. That's over 7,000 uh, genes, a third of the genes in the, uh, the genome. So an awful lot of effects. 185 of these were persistently uh, affected, um, so over time. And there, here are some examples of some of the, uh, the genes that popped up in uh, these, uh, these studies. Um, one of the things that came from this study was that they noticed that there was an enrichment for enhancers and a regulatory regions that were affected. And so that's sort of a signal suggesting to us that those regions should be looked at more carefully. But there's very little content on the 450K arrays to look at, it, at enhancers. Okay, so what about uh, causality? Here they've gone to um, twin studies. Uh, so most of the studies, uh, somatic studies, have been uh, cross-sectional in design, and there's a confounding from uh, families. So here uh, was a study looking at Australian women, 66 monozygotic, 66 dizygotic twin pairs, 215 sisters of twins from 130 twin families. Again, it was the 450K arrays, and they found uh, 18, uh, 1,800 replicated uh, in the meta-analysis, um, and they could infer causation because of familial co confounding. And again, um, these same types of loci coming up. Now, when you look at uh, effect size, the uh, highest effects they're seeing in these types of studies is about a 20% change in methylation. But most of, most of them are 5 10% changes in methylation. What does that uh, mean? Um, and that's always a big question in uh, DNA methylation uh, studies. Okay, so uh, this has also been looked at in um, smoking mothers and into uh, newborns. This was, again, uh, a meta-analysis. This is a pregnancy and childhood epigenetics consortium, PACE consortium meta-analysis across 13 cohorts involving 6,000 uh, individuals. Maternal smoking in pregnancy, looking at newborn blood, DNA methylation, again found a lot of differentially methylated uh, CPGs, uh, 568 on uh, significant. Um, and again, they were able to look at cohorts and find persistence into uh, childhood for a number of the effects that were seen, and you can see uh, them here. And again, they were noting changes in enhancers and in regulatory uh, regions. Okay, so uh, Francesco has already mentioned uh, the issue of cigarette smoking affecting uh, semen quality. And this uh, is a meta-analysis looking at some of the, um, the human data, cigarette smoking uh, and semen parameters, 20 studies, 5,000 men, and clear effects on sperm count, motility, and morphology, with the effect size being higher in infertile men and in moderate to heavy uh, smokers. Um, and so that's, uh, uh, that's pretty clear from all of the, uh, the, the studies. And uh, here is just looking at sperm count over uh, studies looking at WHO 1999 career, uh, criteria, 2010 criteria, and in both cases across all of the studies, there is a decrease in sperm count uh, with heavy uh, smoking. Okay, so now what about uh, cigarette smoking and the sperm uh, DNA methylation? So the largest study that I could find was uh, from Doug Carroll's group published a couple of years ago. And so what they had was uh, 78 uh, smokers and 78 non-smokers. And here you can uh, see uh, the effects on uh, semen volume, sperm count, decreased sperm motility, and, uh, as Francesco mentioned, uh, DNA damage, so there were co comet positive cells at a higher level in the sperm of the uh, smokers. And so then uh, they uh, used 450K arrays on uh, the, the sperm of these individuals, again, quite a large uh, study, and uh, what they found was only 141 differentially methylated uh, CPGs. So this is very different from the somatic uh, uh, cell studies that have, have been done. I think that they were quite surprised that so few were uh, significant. 104 hypomethylated, 37 of them hyper, uh, hypermethylated, 
There was also a trend to an increased variation in methylation patterns, and that is shown here. So for the smoker, there was a, more of a spread in methylation than there was in the uh, control group. And so to, to look at uh, the significance of the effects, they also looked at the, uh, how the areas that were affected fit with um, his areas of retained histones. And what they found was that there was enrichment in uh, areas of retained uh, histones. But uh, from this study, most of these CPGs affected were single sites. There were no regions, and they were very small changes, most of them less than 10% in a population of millions of uh, sperm. Okay, and there is only one other 450K array uh, study that I could uh, find, and this was in um, a group of, they did 14 non-smokers versus 14 heavy smokers, only 14 per group. They identified only 11 uh, sites of these 450,000 at greater than 20% uh, difference. And then they went on to do locus-specific assays. You can see this here, the uh, small difference in methylation uh, when they do a validation uh, type of, of assay. So um, I think there were questions as to why there wasn't more of an effect on the DNA uh, methylome. And there, I think that uh, we can go back to the somatic studies. Perhaps there are other areas of the genome that are more uh, susceptible. So how can we get at those? And so um, we've talked about uh, using whole genome bisulfite sequencing. But the other way to do it would be to use a, a custom uh, methyl capture sequencing approach where you uh, pick up the sites in the epigenome you think that are going to be environmentally sensitive. So go after those regulatory type uh, regions. So how are we going to do that? So we got some clues from uh, studies done by Ellen Grunberg and Tomi uh, Pastinen where they've been working in twins and they've been looking at the effects of the environment on DNA methylation in um, blood cells in twins, and these are purified blood cells. And what they find is that areas of methylation closer to 90 to 100% aren't variable with environment. And the same is true of uh, areas of methylation in the 0 to 10%, most of the sites that are on the uh, 450 arrays. But if you go into intermediate levels of methylation between 20 and 80%, that's where you're finding your variation between twins due to uh, environment. So how can we go to the sperm and look at that? So what we've done in a study that's recently published in Environmental Health Perspectives is uh, to do whole genome bisulfite sequencing on a pool of sperm DNA from, uh, from men. And what we were interested in was this uh, area of methylation between 20 and 80%. So we pulled out nearly a million sites in that area and we proved that they were more variable uh, to environment than the sites at either end, which are the ones that are picked up on the 450K array. And that can be seen here. So this is the infinium, that's the 850K array. This little green area is the area of these intermediate variable regions. And our sperm methyl capture has not only the sequences that are on the um, alumina rays, but it also has this million uh, variable sperm-specific uh, sites. And uh, so what we were able to show was that um, if you took individuals that had different methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase uh, genotypes and you put them on folic acid for six months, you could alter their DNA methylome more in those that had the T genotype. And um, what we saw was both hypo and hypermethylation more hypomethylation in the blue. And most of the sites that were affected were these dynamic sites um, on our um, uh, array. And we've now, we're now looking in two other groups, Greenland Inuit, uh, Inuits who've been exposed to high levels of uh, persistent organic pollutants and uh, obese uh, Canadians. And in both of these cohorts, again, it's these dynamic sites in the uh, sperm DNA methylome that are affected. So uh, we think that this might be a, uh, an easier approach than to go, go to whole genome bisulfite sequencing. Okay, so mechanisms linking smoking and alterations to the sperm epigenome. Um, well, there, 
is some evidence that there's abnormal histone to protamine transition, um, and that could affect uh, the epigenome. Uh, there are studies suggesting that uh, there's differential uh, RNAs um, in the sperm of, uh, of smokers, and um, the potential of DNA methylation to be altered at sites of DNA damage and uh, DNA repair. So I think that we really have to look at um, all of these to get more clues as to what is uh, happening. And so this is a, a study looking at um, uh, non-smokers, heavy smokers, um, uh, looking at increases in seminal cotinine, increases in histone retention seen in the smokers, decrease in sperm counts, and then in the heavy smokers versus the non-smokers, always uh, uh, more abnormality seen in the heavy smokers, depending whether it's normal semen, low motility, or low concentration, more abnormality in the histone retention, and that could certainly uh, affect the uh, epigenome of the sperm. Okay, so what about heritability across uh, generations? Again, uh, very, very little. Um, but there uh, is, uh, for instance, uh, interest in um, uh, neurodevelopmental uh, outcomes in uh, the offspring, and that uh, could be associated with epigenetic effects. Um, and here I'll bring up again the same, uh, same group, um, again showing that uh, paternal smoking is associated with lower sperm counts in in offspring, again, suggesting there might be an epigenetic uh, uh, underpinning. Uh, the so the uh, studies of uh, Pembry showing that um, the prepubertal start of father's uh, smoking um, was associated with increased BMI in uh, sons. So again, suggesting that there are um, potentially vulnerable windows of uh, development during um, male germ cell, cell development that are particularly uh, important. And then again, I couldn't find very many uh, studies of, of heritability. This is a nicotine study in uh, mice. Again, uh, you know, the mouse studies are difficult, but uh, this was a, a reasonable uh, dosage associated with um, F1 uh, behavioral, nothing wrong with the F0 males, but F1 behavioral tests that were worse in the males than in the females, um, effects on F1 uh, dopamine uh, and dopamine receptor, and uh, they started to look at abnormalities in the sperm DNA, so suggesting some heritability here. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, I think that there's biological plausibility we're a bit uh, surprised that so far the studies have not uh, picked up a lot of effects on DNA methylation. I think we need to go to higher resolution studies, uh, look more carefully at uh, mechanisms, and uh, use uh, animal uh, studies and also humans to look across generations. And again, uh, people in, in my group who've uh, worked with me. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? So um, I'm, I'm very much, uh, I'm a window of vulnerability person. I'm a window of vulnerability person. And um, I'm interested in this idea that maybe the methylome could change if there was a primordial germ cell exposure, so a, a fetal exposure, as opposed to an adult exposure to tobacco. Have there been any human studies looking at comparing exposures during those different windows? Because a lot of men who smoke didn't have mothers who smoked, and a lot of men who don't smoke had mothers who did smoke, right, when they were fetuses. So um, has that ever been attempted? So from the, I don't know of any studies, uh, but it looks like uh, there is. Yes, I will present on that later, maybe John also, because that's precisely what we have been working on susceptibility windows where we uh, account for both mother and father in different age windows and grandparents. And the epigenetics of sperm? That's, that's, the, I think that's the question is that I haven't seen any of the epigenetic uh, approaches to this yet. Do, do we know if those few CPG sites that are 
differentially methylated in the, in the DNA or the sperm DNA of smokers are associated with that fraction of the, the, of the genome that is still associated with histones rather than prodomines. Do we know anything about the location of those? Um, so I guess it was Doug Carroll's study that has looked at that a little bit and just found that it was enriched in areas where histones were not supposed to be. So it was the histone retention areas they found an enrichment. Um, but I don't know if they looked, in, and again, it's, it's so few sites that have been looked at with these 450K arrays that uh, I think you really have to do much more high resolution. Uh, j just, if I may just take a second. So I'm making an executive decision. We, we, we have lunch, uh, we have a whole hour for lunch. So I'm willing to go a little five minutes over here and there to go into the lunch because we really have plenty of time for lunch. It's gonna be catered here in the room. So just, I, because I think the conversation is important. So it's becoming increasingly apparent that there's a whole, the RNA epigenome, you know, M6A and other modifications. I don't, I don't not enough of a sperm biologist to know are there RNA molecules in the sperm that may be differentially methylated or base and modifications that may be critical contributors to this? And we're not seeing Yes, yet? but affected by smoking, no one started studying that. They're really just getting at all of those uh, marks now where they're produced, the epididymosomes, uh, what affects them. But it's a huge uh, new new area. And yes, there's heritability, but smoking effects, it, has, it hasn't been looked at yet. Earlier on in your uh, presentation, you mentioned a study uh, looking at males that were, where there was never smokers, current smokers, and former smokers. And I didn't remember whether you mentioned what was found with former smokers compared to the other two. Okay, so when you're looking at somatic, it uh, de same the same sites are affected, uh, but at a much lower level and uh, the um, significance level. So there's an attenuation with uh, former smokers, but a number of the sites stay affected over time. 